Hey, I suppose in a way we felt the experience of younger people in the Muslim community there. Hey, in some ways we were going to talk about the experience of you know, the older members of the Muslim community from a Glasgow point of view. There's been a slight change to the title of our presentation and that there'll be three of us. We're getting three for the price of one today, but it's on behalf of three organisations in Glasgow. Glasgow Life, which is Glasgow Museum, Social Work and Cultural Heritage. The thing that unites us is that we recognise the importance of sharing stories of the older members of the Muslim and South East Asian communities of Glasgow and Scotland. And we are working together to take these stories to a wider audience. I'm Crawford McGugan, I'm a curator at the Open Museum, which is the outreach department of Glasgow Museums. Then uh, Dr Anwar will explain a bit about the benefits of our work with people attending the Muslim Elder Daycare Centre in Glasgow as his role as centre manager. And Omar Sheikh, the co-founder of Colourful Heritage, will introduce Colourful Heritage and the challenges of developing a community-led project addressing under-representation in Glasgow and indeed Scotland. A bit of context, Glasgow is uh, Scotland's most diverse city. It was the proud host of the Commonwealth Games last year and welcomed visitors and participants from all over the world. It's a post-industrial city since the 1960s and it's seen big changes in its population, particularly over the last 10 to 15 years, going from 5% of Glaswegians identifying themselves as coming from an ethnic minority to 12% today. The city has a tradition of uh, migrants arriving and staying, the Irish community, Italian and the Asian communities. Uh, and since 1999, the city has been a dispersal centre for asylum and refugee communities in the UK. About 1 in 20 people in Glasgow identify themselves as Muslim. That's just over 32,000 people. Glasgow Museums is recognised as one of the greatest civic collections in Europe. There's nine museums that you can visit. The Old Museum is the outreach department and uh, we cover the whole of the city taking museum objects out and about, you can perhaps see from this, this picture there. The Open Museum was set up to offer people who don't, won't or can go to a museum for whatever reason, be that financial, cultural or physical. Uh, it was set up in 1990, around about the time that Glasgow was rebranding itself as a, as a cultural capital with the European city of culture. So how did we come to be working in partnership with Dr Anwar? Well, around 1997-98, a visitor studies programme suggested that there were very few Southeast Asian museum visitors, particularly so at the Borough Collection on the south side, where there's lots of members of that community living. The Central Mosque was the Central Mosque Board was approached by the then, or alongside the then head of museums. So it was important at that time when we started the partnership about 14, 15 years ago that it had senior management backing. The first obvious group to work with was the, the older people at the daycare centre attached to the mosque. The older ladies group, the aunties, they were engaged first primarily, primarily through creative workshop programmes using objects from the Islamic collections as inspiration. A pattern was established where project work was undertaken with the ladies using the Islamic collections and having arts-based outcomes for a number of years and these outcomes were displayed in the mosque. In 2009, we began a project with the men's group, seen here. Engaging, the men is a, engaging with men is a challenge in the arts. What are they interested in? Will they want to be creative? Will they share stories in a social setting? With the starting point of the projects that we do always being what the group is interested in, we arrived at a series of stories relating to transport and transport in Glasgow in the 1960s and 1970s and that went on to become a display called Moving People in 2010 and I guess just shortly after this period this is when myself and we seem to cross paths with, with Omar. Uh, the next slide we have here sort of shows the development of that project. You know, that last display, that wasn't the end of the story. It went on to become a story about representation, sometimes very personal representation a representation about community, social history and integration in the city. Mr Mohammed Din, uh, he's seen there holding on to the pole, that's in the back of a bus in the Riverside Museum. He was on the phone one day and I feared the worst. Had, a, had he been offended by this display sometime, somehow, was the Urdu translation wrong? No. 
He appeared in the display in a photograph, but hadn't been mentioned by name. Now, he wanted to tell us his story. Now, it took three years of petitioning within the bureaucratic structure of Glasgow Museums to finally arrive at a permanent display in the Riverside Museum, uh, featured here in a newspaper article. Journeys to Glasgow is a short film featuring the stories of these five members of the community. Although an award-winning social history documentary, the museum itself had dictated the interpretation that was to be used, in this case video. Mr. Dim, when he first made contact, he showed us his uniforms, his certificates, his licenses, his long ser service medals, <coughs> and other participants brought along other archive material as well. So my question would be, how does the museum service respond to a changing population? How do museums respond to demands for representation? Who makes those decisions? on what is represented, who represents it, and how. But I would say that outreach is key in terms of making connections and building bridges. I'm going to hand over to Dr. Anwar at this moment. This morning, there were more uh, mature and senior uh, audience, and I was very pleased to see youngsters, uh, but uh, unfortunately, they left without listening our stories. <laughs> uh, so no harm, still uh, all are here, youngsters, to let you know what we, we are having our partnership with Open Museums. Our history goes back in 1997, when we started a, a project about Muslim social inclusion. So as a result of that, uh, we had exchanged objects at the Central Mosque. Central Mosque built in 1994. And since that time, uh, there is a lot of work going on. Uh, there are so many stories uh, and the project which we, we had uh, already completed, like South Asian Arts, Heritage Pakistan, Architecture and Design, Operation Pakistan. Specifically in uh, relation to Operation Pakistan, I would like to share a story about the partition time when Pakistan and India became two independent countries. There were so many people held back in Delhi. One of my service users who was in charge for aviation as a director of uh, aviation in Karachi, he was given a duty to come and look at the people who are waiting for their departure from Delhi to Pakistan in a safe environment. Uh, he was so fortunate that he has been given a responsibility to transport 7,000 people from Delhi to uh, Karachi. And that was a great uh, success for him to be the responsible person at that moment of time. You may remember uh, Pakistan became independent in 1947, but the time Pakistan and India replaced British Raj, there were riots, bloodshed everywhere, very tragic stories uh, we have heard from our, those elders. Unfortunately, this gentleman has passed away. But apart from that, there were so many stories when people came to work in transport, uh, double clutch buses, always hitting back, and money taking out of their wages when there is a shortfall. So there is a, a good and bad stories we have linked back uh, in Glasgow with the help of the museum. And we are so uh, pleased the support uh, which has been provided by the Open Museum in Glasgow to the Muslim community. Uh, Crawford has already shown you a number of uh, uh, slides reflecting upon the way they have told on the stories of Muslims uh, in uh, uh, Glasgow. As I said, these stories are full of tragic history. Uh, I have just mentioned one story. There are hundreds of uh, similar stories like that. Tram, uh, you might have heard about Tram in London and Scotland, many cities. Tram came back to Edinburgh again. 
but that uh, was an exceptional experience in 1950s with the number of our clients who were attending uh, the care centers. Uh, you may be aware that Glasgow is a metropolitan city where uh, uh, Muslims representation is great and everywhere, wherever you go to St. Mungo's Museum of Religion, uh, Riverside Museum, uh, Art Gallery, Open Museums, Resource Center, you can see Muslims are there uh, uh, fully engaged and as far as a uh, uh, number of areas are missing over there which is uh, more research on cataloging and uh, uh, compiling history of Muslims in Scotland which has not been done yet and I believe my uh, colleague uh, Umar has already started colorful heritage which will bring a life to the Muslim history over there. Nowadays at mosque uh, uh, we, we had Ibn Battuta journey who traveled to Mecca by foot uh, uh, several hundred years back and similarly there is a Hajj uh, pilgrimage all sorts of stories are linked with the local Muslims in Glasgow and we are proud that Muslims history is going side by side with them as well. Another important work which we had in 1999 as a part of uh, uh, Islamic uh, city of architect, art and, cult, uh, and design where uh, we projected exhibition, Islamic exhibition of art, design uh, and architecture. And so far a number of themes were introduced. Very one important theme uh, was to bring heritage from our land where we used to uh, brought up uh, to the place where now our children can see that was uh, a number of heritage buildings which were from Mughal era, uh, more than uh, five buildings and then we compiled a project called Royal Mosque to Shalamar Garden and that was one of the main themes for our exhibitions which we were awarded from British Council and Glasgow City Council too. Uh, that sort of work I believe is an important for us uh, uh, but we still, uh, there is still a lot for us to learn and develop through work working together and to project colorful history of Muslims in Glasgow who worked hard and playing a vital role in the economic development of the city of Glasgow and we will continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Assalamualaikum. Um, first of all, Dr. Bar, I'd like to say it's a very young audience here that I can see. So. <laughs> um, I am, uh, my name is Omar Sheikh, I'm just going to say very few brief words about the Colourful Heritage Project. I'm not a historian, I'm not an archivist, uh, not an academic, so I'm just a simple community volunteer who decided to help out on this grassroots project. Approximately four and a half years ago, a few of us got together uh, whilst having uh, a bit too much to drink, it's a very strong Iron Brew, just to be clear, it's a Muslim event, <laughs> and uh, we, we, we realised that the stories of the first generation of uh, South Asian and Muslim migrants, our uncles, our aunties, the Babe in the front row at the mosque, all of that, these stories were going to disappear unless somebody captured them. So we decided to get together and uh, we were doctors, accountants, uh, community workers, uh, dossers, you know, the lot. We got together and we decided to put together an initiative called the Colourful Heritage Project which is now, I can say four years later, is the largest online archive of oral history stories of that community in, Europe, in the world, for that matter. Um, we started in Scotland and we focused there initially. We've covered a few different cities there. And uh, we managed to work together in partnership with, uh, and also we worked with the Scottish Government and the Mitchell Library to create an archive. These stories, what we found was actually you can have many academic articles, you can have books, you can have whatever you want, but actually when you hear the story from a person direct, first hand, there's a lot of emotion uh, and a lot of feelings which come out, which otherwise are a lot harder to capture uh, through print media. So we decided we will actually record these uh, using professional companies, so it's of a HD quality, upload them onto the website, and put it in a format which actually young people will engage in. They're a lot more likely to watch YouTube than they are to pick up the next textbook or the next you know, journal or, or academic piece. So 
We found that format to be particularly uh, important. Um, and there was a lovely comment that we heard from one of the chaps who had his father recorded and he picked up on a comment from his teenage son and he said, you know, Dad, he said, I never realized Granddad had done so much for this community. I never realized the challenges he had. And before, when that elder generation, when the Granddad was in the house, frankly, some of the younger community were just, all right, whatever, just talking on, babbling on again, so on. <coughs> when you put them on YouTube, you put them in front of a camera, you make it a bit more exciting, all of a sudden, we found the young people increasing their respect and interest of even members of their own family uh, and, and in terms of hearing their story. So we put together this project. We had uh, three core uh, objectives to capture, celebrate and inspire. First of all, let's capture these stories before these people pass away. Absolutely critical. We interviewed them around four key themes. One was the migration, which is quite a horrific event. Um, especially as many of them came across from South Asia and there was a partition going on at the time. How they got into UK, um, when they started from England, how they got up to Scotland and so on. Um, we asked them about um, the role of religion. We asked about the role of identity, which was particularly important or intriguing or unique in that we asked about Scottish identity versus English identity versus British identity. And I think a comment was made earlier today downstairs. I think it's maybe a bit too simplistic to call this British Islamic perspectives where I think you need to be a bit more nuanced and go into the subtleties of Welsh identity and Scottish identity. And that's played out, and I'll come back to that comment uh, later. And we also asked them very importantly about entrepreneurship and family life. Entrepreneurship, because guess what? We're living in a period of austerity, we've got a young, you know, a whole bunch of young people out there who can't find jobs. So what are the lessons to be a successful entrepreneur? Well, yes, you can watch The Dragon's Den and get some ideas, but you want some real legends? They're actually the people who turned up in this country with very little or poor command of English, with literally four or five pounds in their pockets, and managed today to make successful businesses and become some of the multi-million pound entrepreneurs. And establish a whole community as well, by the way, in the process, all those mosques, all those cemeteries, all those halal shops and, and facilities. So capturing was, was the first part. Second part was to celebrate that contribution. And, and celebration to say thank you to them, but also to you know, take lessons and inspiration from that difficult journey that they had. Um, how did they deal with racism in those early days? What was the attitude and the mindset they had towards that? And as I mentioned, inspire as well. Just concluding on the last two points I wanted to mention, there's something special about, is there something about Las Vegas, as we say, is there something special about Scotland? Um, what we found, which was interesting, was actually Britain's first Muslim elected to a public position in civil society was a Scottish individual called Mr. Bashir Man. He was elected as a councillor in 68, I believe, was it 70? Um, now that's quite surprising because standing here in East London, you would have expected that to be here if you look at the size of the community, or you would have expected that to be in Bradford or in the Midlands. But then if you fast forward, you see the first Muslim <coughs> JP is also from Justice of Peace, is also from Scotland. And then you go forward another 15 years and you find the very first British Muslim MP is Mohammed Sawa for the Labour Party from Glasgow. So there's some very interesting, uh, special things about Glasgow and I would say probably the fabric of Scottish society where the migrant community and the Muslim community have managed to integrate in a way which is quite unique. So that's really it, that's the story. It's called The Colourful Heritage. Get online, have a look at all the videos. And what we've done is we've tried to be very open with our approach in that you can actually go and upload your own video. So if you've got an elderly person in your family uh, who you want to record and capture the stories, you can actually go onto the website, take, down, take the stories on your phone, on your iPad, whatever you want, and upload it there and share it for everyone else for the years to come. Thank you very much.